morning, Bill Muncie is going out to attempt to set a new mile record for propeller-driven craft, a record held by Hawaii Kai, driven by Jack Regis. He will do it over the measured miles set up in the run here at the East Channel Waterway at Lake Washington. The last time that a run was made successfully in this area was done by Stan Sayers when he set a record of 178 miles an hour with two runs through the trap. One, if I remember correctly, at around 194 miles an hour, and the other at about 165, averaging out to 178 miles an hour. Muncie has made one run this morning, which he declared a bulk for both the kilometer and the mile. He came back into the dock area, and he told us two things that happened. First and foremost, that his start underneath the bridge was poor. At the moment you see him moving over to the far side of the lake away, away from us, he'll warm up the engine, take it back up to the uh, bridge area, and will attempt to go through the uh, test trap to set a new mile and kilometer record. Jim McGinnis. And they evidently have some debris in the water out here in his runout area. So perhaps they'll have to clear that up before uh, Muncie gets uh, up on the course. At the present moment, he's down toward Renton and turning around on the wide side, getting ready to come back up through the middle of the course and get underneath the bridge and get ready to go. We started to tell you here a moment ago that uh, when we talked to Bill after he came in after his unsuccessful run this morning, which he was timed out at 177 miles an hour for the mile and 180.2 for the kilometer, that he didn't get a good enough start coming underneath the bridge. His goggles, just before he entered the uh, trap, and uh, just before he entered the trap, uh, his goggles pushed out, and the wind evidently took hold, and he couldn't see too well. So now, uh, some of us here have taken some tape and taped down his glasses, and hope that uh, in so doing, that it will not allow any air to seep through, and to allow him to use the glasses themselves to their full capacity. One thing he has found out in previous test runs out here at high speed, that the, the glasses past 185 miles an hour flatten out, that he has a tremendous amount of difficulty in breathing. Some of the uh, rules under which uh, Muncie and Miss Thriftway are driving, the establishment of world records and national records is subject to the UIM rules. The record, when it is made and if made, belongs personally to the driver, is inscribed under his name and nationality. There is only one world record per class. In this particular instance, the average speed of two successive runs, one in each direction, is taken as the official speed. In speed runs, the time elapsing between the two runs shall not exceed 20 minutes under penalty of disqualification. The record is only valid if its speed equals at least the speed of the previous record multiplied by 1.0075. Monty going by us here at the south part of the course over at Kennedale and proceeding up through the middle of the course here you see, Bill, you probably see the stripings around there, the attempt by those of us here at Ted Jones' boathouse to keep the goggles in place. So we'll see whether or not we're successful. However, it's my feeling that perhaps the wind will be so severe out there that uh, it might even rip the tape right off. He's hitting in a pretty good clip going up through the, from the south to the north end of the course. This is merely a, a survey of the course, and he'll go up underneath the bridge and be ready to go. Kit Muncie, Bill's young wife, standing here next to us watching the screen and watching her husband in operation attempt to break this mile record held by Hawaii Kai and Jack Regis. Here you see Muncie passing by our hilltop camera and right through the middle part of the uh, test trap set up in the East Channel Waterway at Lake Washington. Bill Muncie's career stretches back to 1955 and Unlimited. Prior to that, he had raced a little bit in Detroit and had one or two chances on this Great Lake. Had an accident in that boat, incidentally, and went to the bottom of the Detroit River in the boat. And in 1955, uh, came out here to drive the Miss Thriftway. He was second in the Gold Cup that year, second in the President's Cup, fourth in the Silver Cup, and was eighth in National High Points. 1956, he was first in the Gold Cup, first in the President's Cup, he was seventh in the Seattle Seafair. Again, we remind you that uh, Bill, at the north end of the course, will go up underneath the bridge and will disappear from sight of our cameras, but you'll see him coming down underneath the span, and at which time he'll come through at 130 miles an hour, and then should hit around 195 entering the trap, 
in his attempt to break the record. This is their procedure. Here's the Coast Guard boat standing by. He will attempt to break the current existing mile record. And also, of course, they'll do a, a clocking on him on the kilometer, too. And then, if he is successful in this run from north to south and south to north 20 minutes later, uh, he will then ask for further time to attempt to hit the so-called water barrier mark of 200 miles an hour, something which no man has ever done in a propeller-driven craft. Again, we'd like to emphasize the difference between the record set up by Donald Campbell and his Bluebird. Uh, that is not a propeller-driven craft. In this particular instance, we're looking for a propeller-driven record. Getting back to Bill Muncy's record in 1956, first in the Gold Cup, first in the President's Cup, seventh in the Seattle Sea Fair, seventh in the Sahara Cup, and sixth in National High Points. 1957, he was first in the Gold Cup, second in the Silver Cup, second in the Lake Tahoe race, third in the President's Cup, sixth in the Governor's Cup, and fourth in National High Points. 1958, he was first in the Detroit Memorial. He failed to finish in these races, the Apple Cup, the Diamond Cup, or the Gold Cup. 1959, he was second in the Gold Cup. He was second in the Diamond Cup. He was third in the Apple Cup. He was third in the International Sweepstakes. He was sixth in the Reno Regatta. He was tenth in the Silver Cup, and he did not finish either the Lake Mead Regatta or the Detroit Memorial. He was third in National High Point standing at the end of 1959. He has set two outstanding records in his unlimited career. In addition to winning the coveted Gold Cup in two consecutive years, 56 and 57, he set the current world record for a 15-mile heat in an unlimited hydroplane. In 1957, in September, he established the record of 112.312 miles an hour in the Governor's Cup race at Madison, Indiana. He works for the Associated Grocer Group, which is headed up by Willard Rhodes, and he is works in public relations. He also has other interests, and he also has other limited driving interests. He builds and maintains his own boats and has done a tremendous amount of work in maintaining, creating, and stimulating interest in not only the unlimited field, which he races in primarily, and for which he is known primarily, but also in the limited field to which he has devoted a great deal of his time. Bill Muncy is a man who is thinking in terms of retirement, I'm quite sure, although I've never talked to him officially about it. I think that he would probably choose to regard this as his last year of competitive racing, what with the speed being attained. I think he feels that the, the age mark to which he is now reaching, by his own terms, he says he's 31 going on 28, which means that in his own mind, he's thinking that perhaps this business is for the young and for the quick. And that in this particular instance, I know from having talked to him before, he feels that this is a once-in-a-lifetime effort for a man, and he has so set himself mentally accordingly. His approach to this run has been achieved, I think, with a great deal of maturity, and I think he faces the facts very squarely that conditions must be right from start to finish on this uh, course in order to keep himself at the maximum point away from any possible injury to himself or to the boat. At all times, he'll be considered of his equipment and himself personally. Quite an achievement for a man. And of course, the 200 miles an hour mark that he's looking for is something that's never been achieved before by a man in a propeller-driven craft. And it will be a pioneering first for anyone who can achieve it and Mr. Muncy would like to be that man. This is the bridge, the East Channel Bridge, under which Bill Muncy will have to come. Uh, Colonel Rush Slay, who was on this course in an unsuccessful attempt to break the current record a couple of years back in his boat, the, Mishani, the uh, Shanty one, uh, this right turn as he comes onto the bridge is a tremendous thing. Now you see Muncy coming under the bridge and getting up a fine head of steam, judging by his rooster tail, and in a moment here on a 100-inch lens, you'll see the boat directly coming down through the test trap of looking for the mile record and the kilometer record. So let's see whether or not Bill Muncy is able to make this one a successful go. He was unsuccessful in his earlier effort today at 177 miles an hour for the mile and 180.2 for the kilometer test. Now let's see what he achieves as he approaches the beginning of the north side of the test run area. Here you see him going past our hilltop camera. And his boat seems to be performing very nicely, and he's moving into the trap. He is now actually in the trap. 
And you'll see how light that nose is and riding very firmly on the water. Ted Jones, the designer, tells us that between 175 and 185, the wind created by the boat at that speed takes over. And then past 185, you have the action of the water being a very important thing, which is why the course must be regular in its uh, working element as far as the water itself is concerned. Here comes Bill Muncy through the south part of the test trap area. And we will attempt to get an unofficial time for you just as soon as we can. He's nearing the end of his run and coming here to the runout area just in front of us at Kennedale. And has come down off the uh, top end of his speed. And I would just imagine offhand that he quite hasn't hit what he wants to hit in the way of uh, a top speed. 181 is the way the officials clocked him. And the uh, 181.8 on the run which still puts him six or seven miles away, and 191 on the kilometer. 181.1. Jim McGinnis is getting the timing from the officials. Jim, was that 191 a clocking for the mile unofficially? The unofficially for the mile, his run down the course was 191 on the mile, and for the kilometer, he was timed out at 180. We haven't got the test on 191. that. 191. 191. 191. 191 on the mile, and evidently 191 on the kilometer, unofficially. That's the way we've heard it uh, in listening secondhand to Jim McGinnis talking with Jim Sterrett. And now, of course, uh, he will come in, and the procedure will simply be that he... He moved his hands down, which would indicate that perhaps he's going to indicate a balk. And he's waving off the, uh, the attempt. But uh, the mile effort was 191, but I think that he wants to go better than that. Uh, he might mentally be set to go for 200 and isn't satisfied with anything less than that. So now we'll wait for the official to go down and have a conference with him. Remember, the procedure on this balk is that Muncie will indicate to Willard Rose, and then Willard Rose, in turn, will transmit that information to Jim McGinnis, who will then, in turn, transmit it by phone to Jim Sterrett. But the clocking that we had was 191. And now, that, and he's shaking him off, so no dice. Evidently, a second balk has been declared. If we can... Uh, One ninety-one, but uh, Bill is shaking off the uh, he's shaking off the uh, the effort that he has just made going from north to south, which would indicate that uh, he's not ready to accept that run. Now the crash boat has gone out there. Some of the photographers taking pictures of him, and uh, the officials are indicating that they would like to have him come in. And they also are uh, very perturbed over a small boat that's cruising around out there. It may look very insignificant, but something like that can cause a man to lose his life when you're trying to get up to speeds that you're now at. Ted Jones has now come out of the uh, boat hangar and is going out to the end of the dock. And here you see a matter of a decision about to be made. The helicopter is uh, moving over, over, hovering over near the uh, small boat that cut across the outer perimeter of the course. But ultimately, that weight can reach the course, and it can cause a lot of people a lot of trouble. Well, we'll have to send somebody out because they're way out at the end of the dock, and we'll have to send somebody out. Al Houston, if you'll send somebody out to get Willard Roads, why, then they'll be able to uh, maintain communication. Meanwhile, Jim Sterrett is out there at the end also, and uh, his phone is ringing down here, so we'll have to stand by, and he's coming back from the dock area to answer the phone. 
Mr. McGinn is going to get himself a good workout. Yeah. Again, we'll repeat yeah. that the uh, timing on the kilometer and the mile, 191, but uh, the first indication oh, we had from... We're trying to keep that darn transport away from us. We're trying to get that transport away from us. I don't know how they got the word. Now they're getting word to... Uh, Bill is coming over here, evidently, to... Uh, the, the crash boat didn't touch him because if they had, why, well, they could have nullified the run. See the... So Bill is now coming in. And one thing you can say about this, that all consultations are done out in the uh, full view of the public. Now what they're trying to do is to tell the boat to stay away from it. <laughs> 191, and evidently Woodard says that uh, he's evidently shaken off uh, Bill's signal, and evidently they're going to accept that 191 in the run from north to south. And he'll go back out, and uh, evidently uh, I understand that... Uh, from listening to Willard, and I'm pretty well away from him, that he said, uh, use your own judgment. In other words, Bill said to him, you want it the same way, the same speed. Now, this is exactly what the uh, uh, plan of procedure was. We'll try to ask Ted Jones. Ted, would you mind coming over here just a moment? Ted, I'd like to ask you briefly, uh, what is the procedure here? I know you were interested in the crash, but you didn't, he wasn't, they weren't supposed to touch. Were they, uh, Oh, no, they, they can touch the boat, and they can even put fuel in if they want to do. They can make adjustments as long as they go back within 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. We were waving Bill in to tell him to go north because in order to average 191 miles an hour and enter the trap at 180, he had to exceed 200 miles an hour to do this. His easy run from south to north is now coming up because he has two and a half miles to get up speed. We're coming from north south he has to go underneath that bridge and make a right hand turn the boat isn't built to make a right hand turn that speed so the tougher turn of, of the two as far as the boat is concerned is from north to south yes that's why he made this first then he knows now how fast he has to run north well he can go north now uh, better than 210 miles an hour and but he doesn't have to uh, all he has to do is go uh, 195 north to establish a new mile now, would he be tempted to go over the 200-mile-an-hour mark in order to get 200 and get everything all in one jump? He might He might do that. He'll, in other words, you leave it to his judgment? Yes. He's safe for going north because he's going with the wind. He has a longer stretch to get up speed, and he can safely slow down and get underneath that bridge uh, without any problem. In other words, it's easier when you're going back underneath the bridge so you have enough water to run through it. Yes, you can pick the center. Going to the left, he can make a sharp turn to the left at 150, but not to the right, coming south. Right. Thank you very much, Ted. What do you think now? I mean, are you pleased with the action of the boat? You had a chance oh, to Oh, yes. Her? Yes, it was riding very nicely. Well, yeah. now, if you go for the honey, you're, you're trying to break that mile record at the moment and work up by degrees to the 200-mile-an-hour mark. Then, yes. then would he also go today on the 200? Do you think that the water is right for 200 miles an hour right now? Uh, I believe so. Right now, I believe, uh, well, he did. He just <laughs> did hit 200 and about yeah. 203 just now in order to make that average. So that's proven that the water's propitious for this. Now, is he ready miles. to go now? Will he start from this uh, yes, short an area? He's on the way now. And he has about two miles to get up boat speed. So uh, he should enter the trap at what, around 200 miles an hour? He should, from this more. way. Uh, and he'll come over here to the near side, yes. stay as close to the buoy line as you can? Yes, you notice he's coming right off the end of our dock yes. here. Bill Bunty, on a south to north run, taking a time of 191 miles an hour, and he has a couple of miles to get up a good head of steam in order to get into that trap area going from south to north. You heard Ted Jones, the noted boat designer, telling you what he could do, that in averaging out to 191 miles an hour, he had to enter the trap at over 200 miles an hour, counting his, de counting his deceleration at the end of the run. So here he comes, moving real hard and getting into the uh, test area right at this moment, and has his boat up where he wants it. The boat is behaving very nicely, seems to be very solid, 
and is has just entered the trap. And the rooster tail maintains a, a full steady uh, line of sight to us standing down here at Kennedale. And as you watch on your screen, you'll notice the boat is behaving beautifully and Bill seems to have things well under hand. Jim McGinnis is getting ready to take down the time for both the kilometer and the uh, mile. You'll see him disappear from view underneath the bridge. His test run will have been completed and Jim McGinnis will be able to give us the time as produced by the timers of, on the uh, test run here in the East Channel Waterway. I think that we're about to see a new record set for the mile and for the, perhaps for the uh, kilometer. 191 was the average that they had before on both runs from north to south. Now this being the easier of the two runs in the eyes of Ted Jones, the noted designer. Here's a new record for you. Okay, what is it? And here we're going to repeat it for you just as Jim McGinnis gets it over the phone. Okay. And we'll take our time here in, in this particular regard. <coughs> so there would be no mistakes made. The run from north to south was 191 miles an hour. And now this run from south to north is the one that we're going to give you. And the uh, kilometer, evidently, he has not uh, set a new record in. We're merely repeating one side of a conversation we're hearing. For the mile, 192.513. So he has a new record in the mile, and for the kilometer, 187 going from south to north. So there is not a new record in the kilometer, but there is a new record in the mile at uh, roughly 192 miles an hour. Split the difference between 191 and 192, and you have the establishment of a new record for the mile by Bill Muncy in the Miss Thriftway. His north to south run was 191 miles an hour. His south to north run was 192 miles an hour, 0.513. And we'll get the average for you in a very short while. Bill Muncy, the young man in the boat, has climaxed his career and has moved the speed of the mile exactly to the Willard. point where they wanted it. Willard, new, mile new mile record for Willard Rhodes. Congratulations to him. And we'd like to ask him to come over here. And uh, Willard, if you will, could you come over here, please? We'll give you the average. We told you earlier that the planned procedure of this camp was to come out here and go for 191 or 192. Willard, are you right on schedule as far as your uh, efforts are concerned? Right on schedule. Bill was told in this water to just go out and break the mile record, so he's right on schedule, Bill. You, you say this record. Now, you have a new record at 191 miles an hour, which is now four miles an hour better than what you had established by Hawaii Kai. The 200-mile-an-hour mark still remains uh, to be assailed and to be broken. Will you do that today, or will you ask for further sanctions? I want to talk to Bill first when he comes in, mm -hmm. see how he likes the water. And in other words, you're now thinking in terms of water, which has to produce 200 miles an hour. That's average, right. Which p poses a different problem. No, not necessarily. Oh. No, no different problem. Yeah. I want to see what he says about the water condition before mm -hmm. he goes out and makes an attempt at the 200. We're going to wait for absolutely right water yes. before we go any faster. Suppose this out. water were not considered right by Mr. Muncy, your driver. What would happen then? Well, we wait the day out, and actually we'd ask for a new sanction for tomorrow, Bill. When would you have to ask for that sanction? When would be the last time? Just before closeout time? <clears throat> Yeah, I think as far as new sanctions mm -hmm. concerned, we can go How do you feel? You're right? relatively calm about oh, this. Oh, real thing. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, after all this waiting, it's kind of a shock treatment, Bill. <laughs> well, now, you've planned this thing very carefully, uh, Willard. I mean, uh, this this has been something in your mind, I think, what, for a couple of years huh? at least, hasn't it? Yeah, we've never had a chance, Bill. We've always been building new boats, you know, during the winter. This is the first time we had a chance to get a boat ready for the mile. <laughs> you thought, though, in terms of 191 or 192, that's and right. now you are now thinking in terms of 200. That shows you Bill Muncy. You yeah. tell him just go out and do something. In fact, when he come in here, I don't know whether you heard him or not. You said he said you use your judgment. Yeah, he says you want me to just duplicate that, and I said use your own judgment. Here's your new world record. Unofficially, here's your new world record. Jim McGinnis gives One, it to you. 192.001. That's unofficial. So we do, uh, cross, uh, they'll check that now about three ways. Oh, the kid's right on the button then. Yep. Jack oh, Ramsey. Uh, would like to see you, Willard, so you go right ahead. And thank you very much, and our congratulations to Willard Rhodes, the representative of the Associated Grocer Group. Here you see Bill Muncy with a new record in his hand in the Miss Thriftway coming down through the East Channel Waterway. And uh, we'll come back here to join with his crew in a congratulatory effort. And Jack Ramsey, they still have a problem, though. They're still looking for 200 miles an hour. And this, of course, is the, the big, all-important question because 200 miles an hour is something that no man has ever achieved before in a propeller-driven craft. And so Bill Muncy will be the sole judge as to whether or not the water is right. He has had the boat up over 200 miles an hour 
in unofficial trials out here in this same area of water, and he knows the type of water he must have, and he knows his boat and his equipment. It seems to be behaving beautifully. So here comes Bill Muncy, who in this year of 1960 gets himself off to a booming good start with a new record in the mile at 192 miles an hour unofficially, 192.001. 191 from north to south, a little over 192 miles an hour from south to north. Bill Muncy coming here to the boat area of Ted Jones' home at Kennedale at the south part of Lake Washington. And I suppose that uh, the first thing that impresses us as we stand here reporting this is complete quiet, the c complete calm, and an almost assurance that uh, this was something that they knew they were going to be able to do at uh, any given time. We're going to attempt to take our equipment and move out on the uh, dock area if we can and get out uh, as far as we can without having uh, mixed anybody up. Could you get a thank you very much? Okay, fine. Uh, we'll try to get out on the dock area here and move right out. You perhaps can hear us moving and talking at the same time. And if you can put that back together, sir, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Sullivan. Incidentally, Mike, you're a member of this crew. How do you feel about this boat? Is there any doubt in your mind that you're going to be able to make this record? I think the boat will make it. <laughs> well, all it needs is, is driver Muncy out there. Yes, sir. Have you ever driven a boat, uh, you know, well, driven the Miss Ripley? No, I haven't driven the big one. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, let's see if we can get out here. Thanks very much, Mike. Now, evidently there was... The kilometer record was 187 miles an hour. But the mile is good. And evidently, the way Muncie is talking, he wants to go back after the kilometer record this afternoon. That's the way he's talking. The mile record, he's satisfied with. But he wants everything, and he certainly wants 200 miles an hour, and that will call for a conference between Willard and Muncie. Jim McGinnis wants to make very express, expressly sure that the boat is not touched by the crash boat and that they can throw him a line, but they wanted to be real sure of that, so they don't throw him a line. They would be real sure about things and throw him to the side. Now, you as a member of the safety committee, your name? Don Mers. Don, uh, yeah. I've noticed that you've chucked the boat every time that it's been brought in, whether the run was official or not. And uh, turn around here so the camera can get a look at us here. Uh, Don, as a member of the safety committee, what are your specific duties in a particular situation like this? Well, Bill, our responsibility is to go over that boat from one end to the other and try to assure the crew that their boat is safe. And as APBA officials, we are responsible to uh, check this boat from one end to the other. Now our next official act is to get on, <clears throat> to be the first people on the boat to assure that uh, nothing in an unofficial manner was done to this gain is the record. No other boat should touch the. No other boat can touch it, and the inspection committee gets on, makes a quick check, and then the crew takes over. Well, Don, looks like you're going to be real busy. Thank you very Thank much you, for Bill. the information. Don Murs, a member of the safety committee, who will check over the Miss Thriftway, and we'll wait uh, Bill Muncy coming in here because he has made it look like a very academic, uh, casual type of ride, and uh, he belies the amount of work and experience which he expresses in his own person and the amount of work and effort turned forth by his crew in making Miss Thriftway a real going machine out here at Lake Washington where a new mile record has been set by the Miss Thriftway driven by Bill Muncy. He's a happy boy in a, his own quiet way. He's, the way he's talking, he said he went into the... Re he said he went in at about 182 and came out at about 200. That's probably from the south to north run, but coming down from north to south, he had that tremendous problem trying to come underneath the bridge and that right-hand turn, which is a violation of the principle of this boat, is um, uh, something that uh, every driver faces as a problem. Colonel Rushley said it was a tremendously difficult thing. Jack Ramsey, if you will, come over here a moment. A man who has spent a good many hours on the Miss Thriftway. Tell me, my friend, are you very well pleased with what you've done so far? Well, we're pleased. We want to go a little more here, Bill. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's having a little trouble coming out on the bridge and accelerating. Yes. And uh, he's only going into traffic at about 180 miles an hour. In other words, he's you over, want that 200 miles an hour, right? Yeah, he's over 200 coming out. But you but, have to get uh, it quicker. We've got to get it up a little quicker. What, uh, yeah. what, what sort of things can you do? Well, Bill, uh, there's several things that we can work at. Uh, 
we're going to need to change the wheel to get us up a little quicker, a little more acceleration. We'll have to wind the engine a little tighter, though. Okay. Uh, we'll have to talk to him, find out what RPM he turned to do this. Thank you very much, Jack Ramsey, as crew chief. We'll uh, want to get hold of uh, Bill Muncy and uh, talk with him. We've talked with Willard Rhodes, the representative owner. Kit, uh, suppose you drop by here. Yes, let's talk to Kit. Uh, Kit Muncy. Kit, how do you feel about the run? Were you oh, excited? Wasn't exciting? It? No? I'm glad it's over. Well, this is a, you know the thing that impressed me is very quiet, very calm, very matter of fact. Tell me, how was Bill just before the run? Did you could you notice any particular sign oh, of tension? Oh, he's nervous. Too. Yes, he was very tense. I think. Did he sleep well last night? Well, all two hours of it. <laughs> yes. That's in other words, that's normal, isn't it, for him before? Uh, well, this is worse than a race. Yes. It's mm. much worse. The tension mm. is greater. Yeah, of course, and, he still uh, has the tension now, looking for 200 miles an hour, doesn't yes, he? Yes, I mean, sir. He's he still got that hangover his head. But I think he's pretty happy mm. right now. What about you? How do you bear up under it? Fine. How are the yeah. youngsters, including the latest? Little Everybody's little. just fine. <laughs> Thank you very much, kid. It's been nice talking to nice you. Nice talking to you. Kit Muncy. And let's talk with Bill Muncy. Bill, Hello, William. congratulations, my friend. <laughs> Step over here. Let everybody see on the... You're, uh, you're a young man with a new record. Tell me, how do you feel about it? Oh, gee, I'm happy, real happy. Let's I'd like to have, uh, I like to have done a lot better, Bill, but under the circumstances, uh, we've been test running out here, you know, yeah. and we didn't know just exactly where they were going to set the mile up, mm -hmm. so we didn't know how fast we had to come under the bridge. Mm -hmm. So I've been coming under the bridge about 110, figuring, well, I can hit the shoot yeah. good 200. Well, mm -hmm. golly sakes, I did that today. I was, I was doing 170 when I got there, so... Mm -hmm. uh, I picked it up this time about 10 miles an hour, uh, close to 15 coming this way, and um, I was able to hit the shoot at about 180, 185, and I came out at the end of the shoot, I was doing a little over 200, which came in the average. Any trouble with the boat or with the water conditions? No, the water conditions good. Coming into the wind, here's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> coming into the wind, it got a little hairy. Uh, one time there, boat got a little light. Uh -huh. And, uh, but other than that, everything was fine. The boat was handling well. I got a little vibration problem. What about 200 too. miles an hour? Gee, well, you, we're going to talk actually, about it. I'd like to get there. You actually must have gone over 200, though, sometime in the course, didn't you? Oh, well, I figure I'd come out. I was doing about 204, 203, mm -hmm. something like that. Because I didn't get into the chute fast enough. Did uh, the tape work out for you? Yeah, kept the goggles <laughs> in my head. The first time with the, you know, it just like a yeah. vacuum just sucked them right off. And uh -huh. so we came in and put the tape on and no trouble. Well, what about just... the kilometer record? You think maybe this afternoon or you just... Well, yeah. the boss and I are going to talk it over and along with Ted Jones and Jack Ramsey and we'll uh, think about it. I have a little vibration problem and if we could uh, come up with something that could solve that, I'd be a little happier about it. I like the, the kilometers up there in an average speed of around 195 and uh, that's pretty quick. I like to go through both directions at around 200 if I could, and I, I'm a little afraid right at this point to do it with the rudder I've got. Bill, uh, you said this is a once-in-a-lifetime proposition for a young man. Uh, do you still feel that way? Well, while we're through with this series of running, uh, Bill, I'll never again uh, ever go through for a world's record ever. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't know. I'm a young man, I guess, sir. <laughs> it's just a little too much. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't take it again. You think this might be your last year of racing? Oh, no. I don't think I'm through racing or driving, but uh, as far as world record tries are concerned, I don't think I'll ever be interested in trying again. I just...